The functioning abilities of the human hand are performed by a sophisticated system. Its integrity is necessary for day-to-day -day operations. A thorough examination of sensory and mechanical properties is essential to comprehend normal hand characteristics. The hand, positioned at the end of the upper limb, is a combination of complex joints whose function is to manipulate, grip and grasp, all made possible by the opposing movement of the thumb. The pincer-like movement of the thumb, which enables us to grab objects between the tips of the thumb and index finger, accounts for much of the significance of the hand. The anterior side of the hand is its palmar or volar surface. The posterior aspect is the dorsal surface. In identifying the individual digits, the thumb pollux is digit one, with the other numbers following sequentially from lateral to medial. The hand and wrist have a total of 27 bones arranged to roll, slide and spin, allowing the hand to explore and control the environment and objects. That is why the hand is considered to be the most dexterous part of the body. The most proximal part, the hand or the carpus, is formed from eight small bones collectively referred to as the carpal bones. The carpal bones are bound in two groups of four bones, the pisiform, trichectrum, lunet, and scaphoid on the upper end of the wrist. The other four bones are the hamate, capitate, trapezoid, and trapezium on the lower side of the hand. You can remember these eight bones along with their arrangements easily with the help of mnemonics. She looks too pretty try to catch her. As you can see here, the proximal row has four bones and the distal row also has four bones as shown here. Take a moment to commit to your memory using this very helpful mnemonic. Other bones of the hand are the metacarpals, the five bones that comprise the middle part of the hand, the phalanges or singular phalanx, the 14 narrow bones that make up the fingers of each hand. Each finger has three phalanges, the distal, middle, and proximal. The thumb has only two. That was just the intro to the bones of the hand. If we look at the muscles of the hand, the muscles that act on the hand can be divided into two groups. Extrinsic muscles, located in the anterior and posterior compartments of the forearm. They control crude movements and produce a forceful grip. Intrinsic muscles, located within the hand itself, they are responsible for the fine motor functions of the hand. In our previous video on the upper line forearm, we discussed the flexor and extensor compartment muscles. These muscles originated from the humerus, common flexor tendon, or common extensor tendon. Their insertion, however, was at the wrist, at the flexor or extensor retinaculum, or the bones of the hand. Both the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles are organized in osseofacial compartments within the hand. The hand is comprised of 11 separate compartments. These are the four dorsal interosse, three volar interosse, the adductor compartment, the thenar compartment, the hypothenar compartment, and the mid-palm or central compartment. The dorsal interosse act to abduct the digits, and the palmar interosse act to adduct the digits. The thinner and adductor compartment muscles act on the thumb, while the muscles of the hypothenar compartment act on the small finger. The central compartment muscles cause movement at the MCP joints. In the coming sections, we will talk about the fascia and intrinsic muscles of the hand in detail, along with the arterial and nerve supply of the hand. Explore our extensive library of over 1,800 video lectures to learn about a wide range of topics. Only on scadia.com.